Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel once again. And today I got a quick little video, just wanna go over some good books that I read over November and part of December. I just wanna kinda of finish off the year with wrapping up all the novels that I've read before I do my top 10 novels of the year video coming up soon, which I am excited about. Read some good stuff this year. Um, so yeah, I got five novels, five different authors, um, some I have read before, some newer authors, well newer to me, that I uh, hadn't checked out yet. So uh, yeah, once again, got some good stuff in this batch, so let's get right into it. Okay, first up, I want to talk about Chasing the Boogeyman by Richard Chismar. Now to me, this is a definite candidate for book of the year. This one was really, really good. So Richard Chismar, if you're a Stephen King fan, you might know him from writing or co-writing the Gwendy books with Stephen King, and then I believe he wrote the second one on his own. Um, that was the only stuff by Chismar that I had read. I saw this one and just recognized the name, so I figured I'd pick it up. And boy, I, I was pleasantly surprised, to say the least. It's a true crime story, uh, in, in a way. He took basically true events about that actually happened about an individual who was sneaking in through people's windows and just kind of like standing over their beds at night. He wouldn't like hurt them or anything. And that was like a real story that actually happened. And he basically took that idea and turned it into a novel where that individual ended up being a serial killer. So it's a pretty cool read in that regard. He sets it in his hometown and he uses himself as a main character, which is pretty cool as well. Pretty unique uh, form of writing, in my opinion. But this one's super entertaining. It's a page turner. Like any murder mystery novel, you're, you're just itching to get to the end of it because you just want to find out who's doing it and, and the truth of it all. Um, so yeah, if you're into that sort of thing, crime dramas, things like that, this is definitely the book for you. It was certainly very creepy um, in terms of how smart the killer was and everything like that. Uh, definitely creeped me out at points. So this one, I highly, highly recommend it. Next up is The Chill by Scott Carson, which is a pen name. I found out actually through one of my subscribers when I did this in a book haul video that Scott Carson is actually Michael Corita. I'm sorry if I mispronounced, if I mispronounced his name. Um, but yes, I've never read anything from Michael Carita or Scott Carson for that matter. And this is another one that I was very pleasantly surprised. I got through this one pretty quick, very addicting, couldn't put it down. It, uh, it grabs you early. It, it basically centers around this town that is built on the outskirts of a dam and way back in the day, I guess in like the 1800s, uh, a certain, the town had to be part of the town or a different town had to be evacuated because they were seizing their homes because they wanted to flood it and make this dam in order to service the water system in New York City. So this takes place in upstate New York. And a lot of the residents weren't happy about that. They didn't want to move and such. And there were a bunch of casualties, which leads to some paranormal events taking place in the future. That's the gist of it. And like I said, there's a lot of creepiness at the beginning of this novel that really grabs you and pulls you in and really makes it an easy read moving forward. Um, very gripping, very interesting, very well written. It really makes me want to read more from Michael Carita and look into what else he's got. So if any of you guys are more familiar with some of his uh, actual books under his actual name, then uh, let me know in the comments below. I'm open to suggestions for sure. But this one in the meantime, very good read. Another one I would highly recommend. Next up, I went back to a familiar friend of mine, Richard Lehman. I've read a handful of Lehman novels now, and for the most part, I've liked them all. This one's no different. I really did enjoy this read. This one's The Lake, and this one centers around a mother and a daughter who are now living on their own, and the daughter's goes out the daughter goes out for a date and her boyfriend ends up getting killed by this maniac which kind of sets the table to for the rest of the novel. They end up getting harassed and stalked basically by this individual. And it turns out her mother has a bit of a past of her own that we end up going back to in this novel. There's a section of it that we go back to her past. 
and find out a lot about what happened to her at this lake when she was a teenager and it really sets the table and fills out the plot for what happens in the rest of the novel. So this one, the good thing about this one is it does, doesn't give too much away right off the hop, which definitely keeps you page turning. It keeps you keeps you going on this one. Another one I read really quick. Um, again, in true Richard Lehman fashion, there is a lot of nudity for, for a novel. He loves to really go into detail with, uh, with sex scenes and things like that. So if you're not into that sort of thing, I, I definitely steer clear of Lehman in general. But uh, if you can get past all that, he is a great, great writer. And um, seems to be always a bit of a twist ending with his novels, which I've come to expect now with him. And this one was no different with that as well. There was a, a pretty cool twist at the end. So um, always, always fun reads for me, Richard Lehman. Next up, I went back to the Dune series now. And this is the fourth novel in the series, God Emperor of Dune. So what I've, what I've looked into with this series is apparently this one was kind of a sandwich novel. The first three kind of read as a trilogy. This one was kind of a bridge book. And then the, the last, there was only two written under Frank Herbert, but there was supposed to be a third, a, a seventh, um, which his son ended up writing in two novels is what uh, the word on the street is. So uh, this one, again, kind of plays out as a, a bridge novel, and I really did enjoy this one. I, I'm excited that I didn't give up on this series. Again, you've got to be into deep fantasy, high fantasy, or sorry, sci-fi, not fantasy, uh, deep sci-fi, uh, because these ones are definitely, definitely in that category. But to me, uh, I just find these these are beautifully written. I just love his writing style. How detailed it is and how how immersive he he makes his world building it, it is really a, th a thing of beauty and and something that i think everyone should check out especially if you're into sci-fi um so this one takes up basically it's it's like a couple thousand years after the last novel and um leto atreides is still alive but he's like this half man half worm thing god that um everybody worships but hates at the same time and it's one of those like love hate things because he seems to think he's acting the way he is because it's it's for the benefit of the race of people and for the the everlasting life and to keep them from going extinct or something along those lines but he ends up being an asshole in the process so it was a super interesting read and i'm definitely interested to see where this goes from here because they definitely set the table for a lot of plot points that um, they're going to end up going to in the next few novels. So once again, I'm excited to read on into this series and I do recommend checking out the Dune series for any sci-fi lovers out there. And the last one, I finally picked up a Clive Cussler novel, even though I've got a bunch of them on my shelf that I picked up at used book sales and hand-me-downs and things like that. I wasn't sure how I was going to take this, but again, it's only one, and I'm, I was under the impression going in that it was going to be more like a, an Indiana Jones type adventure, and, and I mean, maybe there are some that are like along those lines, but this one was more, it's called The Assassin, by the way, this one was more historical fiction, I would say, because it takes place like early, late 1800s, early 1900s, right at the turn of the century there. And it's basically about like the oil tycoons and like when that was really starting to become a thing, like cars were, were really starting to become an everyday item for people to own. And, you know, oil was becoming a big thing because obviously we had to, we had to make gas for the cars and, and, and I mean, Hey, uh, we use oil in, in basically everything we do. And so it was about these people fighting over, you know, getting the jump on who's going to obtain most of the power in terms of that regard around the entire world. So this one's like international espionage, things like that. So, I mean, if that's your cup of tea, then you're definitely going to want to check this one out. I don't know what the rest of Custler's books are like, but I'm, I'm definitely not going to stop here. It was an entertaining read. It was a pretty quick little read. I, I, I grabbed a, a shorter one to start with because I didn't really know what to expect but I mean hey it was um he was definitely a good writer like he knows he knows what he's doing in that regard a lot of like action sequences and stuff um as well which is a little different from from what I usually read so it was a nice change of pace for me and again it was a good read I'll keep going with Custler for sure 
All right, everyone, thanks again. If you've watched this far, I truly am grateful. Uh, once again, uh, if you're into this kind of thing, give me a thumbs up, give me a subscribe, always helps me out. I do love making these videos and I don't plan to stop anytime soon. So happy new year to everyone out there and happy reading. Talk to you soon.